you guys my name is Brittany and welcome back to my youtube channel you guys in today's video i'm going to be giving you an in-depth comparison between saxon math and math you see <laughs> so you guys if you are not new here to my channel you already would have known that i made the switch from saxon to math you see and i just wanted to give you guys a video just showing you the comparison between both of the programs especially since i have gotten my feet a little bit wet in math you see we have been doing math you see right now for about a month now and i really feel like i got my feet wet i kind of like know how the program works um and i have been loving it but to really be honest um a lot of you guys have been asking me like for a more in-depth comparison and how I feel about both of the curriculums. I just want to say this first off before I flip the camera around and show you guys inside of these levels is that I really love both of these math curriculums. Uh, one just bet better suits my daughter than the other and that's why we ultimately made the switch. However, I feel like Saxon and Math UC, I really feel like they are equally comparable, especially for the methods that they teach mathematics. Saxon is your spiral traditional approach, whereas Math UC is your mastery, it's full on mastery and conceptual approach to mathematics. However, at the end of the day, both of them get the job done. It really just depends on uh, your kiddo and how they learn. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you guys around and we are going to do an in-depth comparison between Saxon and Math UC. Okay, you guys, we are going to start off by going over Saxon Math. Um, I'm going to show you how this program works and how a day of lessons would look in Saxon Math. I do have uh, another video on my channel giving you like a more in-depth view of Saxon if you want to learn more about Saxon Math. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to explain like how a lesson works and how the program overall works. So um, here I have Saxon 6.5 and Saxon 7.6. I don't have like the full textbooks and the solutions manual because I went ahead and I sold that portion of my Saxon math, but I do have Saxon 6.5 here still so I can show you and kind of give you like a more in-depth view of how this program actually works. So you, when you purchase this program, you will purchase it in three parts. You will need your test and your worksheets. And inside of here, it has all of your speed drills, your facts practice, and the test that you're gonna be going over each and every day. Here is the solutions manual, which which has all of the answers to uh, your problems, which is really, really cool about this solutions manual is it actually has all of the problems like worked out. So uh, you don't have to have like any guessing in figuring out like how to solve these problems for your kiddos, especially as they get up here in the mathematic concepts, you can kind of just look and see how their problem was supposed to look and the solution. So uh, this was my solutions manual that I used for Saxon level six, five. And then here is the big bad boy, which is like the student text. It's pretty thick, you guys. Uh, but this goes over like your lesson and the uh, mixed practice for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by showing you guys the tests and the worksheets that the kiddos would do. So before they start their uh, Saxon lesson, they will do their portion, which is their warm up portion. And in their warm up portion, it consists of their facts practice and their mental math. So uh, in this book, Saxon 65, uh, since we already completed, all the pages are going to be filled, but I hope you guys still can kind of like uh, get a good glimpse of all of the things that the kiddos will learn in their facts practice. So it starts off by them doing addition facts in the morning. Uh, it's a variety of of uh, speed drills that they have. They have addition, starting off, then they go into subtraction and division and uh, multiplication. And towards the end of this um, this level in particular, the kiddos will be uh, simplifying fractions uh, in their speed drill. They will also be uh, doing a mixture of turning in percentages into fractions as well towards the latter end of this book. These pages that you're seeing right here is the investigations, extra worksheets that goes along with each investigation. And I'll kind of go into that as I open up the student text for you guys. But this is where you'll have like all the activity pages for your investigations as well. So um, 
Here again is again some of the other uh, ways that they will have the kiddos doing the speed drills each day. And this one was again turning percentages into fractions. And I think that's where the speed drills ends. And one thing I really enjoyed about this program was really being able to see week by week Brielle's progress when it came to doing these speed drills and the time that she was able to get these done. And it really allowed these facts to be more fluent for her. So as she was doing the problems, uh, it was helping her out a lot. So I definitely will say this facts practice was a great addition. I know you can also do facts practice uh, in your homeschool by using uh, other uh, technology and methods and ways like that. But sometimes pen to paper is, you know, great when it comes to that. So facts practice, these will take her anywhere between like you said, seeing a minute and maybe like five minutes a day to start off her Saxon lesson. This right here is Saxon 7 6, and um, these are some of the facts practice that she has, and some of them are pretty similar to the first one. But as it gets towards the latter end of this level, um, the kiddos are going to be uh, reducing fractions in this level. Um, what else are they going to be doing? They're also going to be changing uh, fractions into percentages and uh, decimals. Yeah. So changing the percentages into fractions and decimals in the latter end of this facts practice book as well. So that's where uh, Saxon 7, 6 will end off the kiddos. Uh, in the end of Saxon, it does have the tests. And I don't have all the tests again, like I said, because Brielle actually completed 6, 5. So I have all of her tests stored away, uh, me keeping them as far as like our record keeping. But this is how a Saxon test will look. One thing that's really cool about the Saxon test, and here I'm going to zoom you guys in. One thing that's really cool about the Saxon test is that when the kiddos do the test, if they get a problem wrong, like right here with this fraction question, if she got the problem wrong, it tells me right here that this question came from lesson 42. And then I can direct Brielle back to lesson 42 and then we can review that concept. So uh, it's no like back and forth in a page is trying to figure out like where those concepts was learned. Um, it's really, really cool. Uh, the kiddos get a test after every fifth lesson. So uh, you really are able to see your kiddos progression as they go through these tests uh, within this level or within whichever level of Saxon because after every fifth lesson you're able to see engage where they're at and you're really able to stop and pause if you see it's a concept that they need to work on more and uh, one thing that's really cool is that if it is a concept that they need to learn more about they do have a supplemental section in the back of the student text that the kiddos can uh, go to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn to a lesson and show you guys how a day would look. So as you guys can see, the day will start off with the speed drill that will last anywhere between a minute to five minutes, depending on your kiddo's capability. And then we will go into a lesson. So I think I went ahead and I pulled out uh, one of Brielle's old um, workbooks so I can kind of show you guys a lesson that she's doing. So I think I picked lesson 116 is the lesson that I picked to kind of go over to you guys of how a day of Saxon would look. So again, uh, she would do her facts practice. And in this case, her facts practice was, um, her facts practice was going from percentages to uh, writing it in fractions, which was like the test K form. We would do the mental math. And she actually was doing the mental math uh, portion through Nicole, the math lady. And Nicole, the math lady was actually how Brielle was learning her math lessons through Saxon. I did not have to teach the lesson, um, even though this text is written for written towards the kids where the kids can actually read this and learn the math practice themselves and then go on to do the lesson practice she would actually watch Nicole the math lady to get her lesson practice in so um here is this lesson. This is Brielle's uh, school nest notebook that she used. Um, I really, really love using grid paper uh, for Saxon because the kiddos are learning the skill of copying and writing down their uh, answers. Like they have to write down the problems into their notebook and using grid paper was really, really helpful. So as you guys can see right here, when she would do Nicole the math lady, Nicole the math lady will give her some problems that she would do and she would uh, practice those problems during the practice set. And again, this is just regular traditional traditional math, the way that they're teaching her the concept of uh, adding and what are they doing? Finding common denominators and comparing fractions is what she was doing in this lesson. So this is what she would do in her video through Nicole, the math lady. Then after she would finish Nicole, the math lady, she would go in and do her lesson practice. And for this portion, her lesson practice went from A to, I believe, um, A to N is where her lesson practice went 
to. So here, let's see. Yeah, so right here is the problems that she did. So from A to N, she would do all of these problems right here in her lesson practice. Then from there, she would go into her mixed practice. Now for her mixed practice, what I would do is I wouldn't require her to do all of these problems right here in her mixed practice. As you guys can see, each mixed practice uh, has... 30 problems. So in her mixed practice, I will only have her do evens or odds. So here is uh, Brielle's work from that day. So this is her Nicole the math lady, her lesson practice that she did, and then her mixed practice, which will include at this day, she did odds. So she would do the odds. And that concluded her uh, math lesson. And as you guys can see, this is a traditional spiral program um, where she is continuously reviewing the older concepts that she learned in the text uh, from previous lessons and she is being introduced to a new math concept every single day. Now, sometimes when she would do the math concept, they will only do like a part one to a concept and then lessons after that, she would do a part two of it and then uh, it would pick up from where it left off. But in the mixed practice, it will always have a continuous review of each of the other problems that she did. Like this problem right here was from lesson 116. This problem right here was from lesson 32 and 61. Uh, so one thing is uh, that Saxon is known for is that continuously spiral when it comes to uh, their curriculum. And this is how the program just works uh, overall in general. So this is um, Saxon Math. I forgot to show you guys in Saxon that Saxon also has these investigations. There are 22 investigations where they will go over like a specific skill. Uh, and this one right here, they are actually teaching the kiddos how to use a protractor, uh, which was really, really cool. So Brielle learned about obtuse right and uh, straight angles. And then in the tests and worksheets, they will have like a little uh, exercise that the kiddos can practice using their protractor protractor and she went ahead and practiced using her protractor so again there is 22 of these investigations and they go over a variety of topics when Brielle was doing Saxon 7 6 she actually learned circumference and how to use a compass in one of the investigations as well so this is also a part of Saxon math that I forgot to show you guys earlier so now on to math you see Okay, you guys, here is Matthew C. And I am newer to this program than I am to Saxon. So I really hope I do this program justice in explaining to you guys um, how Matthew C works and everything like that. So I'm gonna do my best. Uh, but I have been uh, using Matthew C at this point for about two months now. So um, I kind of got my feet a little bit wet. So we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a try. So Epsilon is pretty similar to Saxon and in the fact that with each level, you have multiple parts to it. So as far as Epsilon, uh, the level goes, you will always have your instruction manual, which uh, has the teaching, the teaching portion for you if you decide not to utilize the uh, DVDs or the live streaming. Now for the Epsilon level, I went ahead and I purchased the digital pack, which has the DVD live streaming, and it also has the uh, instructions manual online for me to use. Um, however, I do have like the hard copy instruction manual as well. Um, so again, uh, this is your instructions manual, which has each of the lessons, the overview, if you do wanna teach it to your kiddos instead of them watching the video led by uh, Mr. Demi. Um, in the back, it has all of your answers and it's very similar to Saxon where each of the solutions is actually like worked out for you. So you don't have to like think about how the kiddos got their answer. I mean, it's all right there for you. Um, I love these types of solutions manuals because you really are able to target the point where your kiddo made a mistake and kind of like go from there and you don't kind of like have to guess by just seeing the answer if that makes any sense. So um, this is again, the instructor's manual. Um, you also will have your student work text and this is the student work text for Epsilon. Um, 
Another part of it is your test, which you will get a test after each uh, lesson. I actually, again, like you guys can see, I actually already have um, some of the tests are already pulled out. Like on Monday, Brielle is actually going to take uh, this test number 13, and then we're gonna be going into lesson 14 after she completes the test. So um, I already have some of them already used because again, like I said, we have been working through this program for um, about six weeks. So each each of the levels again they have like the three books similar to Saxon and then your uh, video lesson here is Zeta's instruction manual the student work text and the test now with these levels is really really interesting is that uh, with math you see they use the integer blocks for the beginner levels when you get to the epsilon fraction levels your manipulatives actually change to these uh, fraction fraction overlay kit this fraction overlay kit is really really cool because the kiddos is actually learning their fractions through using these overlays and I really love seeing Brielle use these overlays as she is working on her problems and she is figuring things out. It's so crazy how um, something as simple as these overlays have really been helping her in solving her fraction problems. So this right here is the halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, eighth, eighths, tenths, sixteenths, and then it has unit pieces. And in the back right here, it does have like a little uh, manual of how the kiddos uh, do use their uh, fraction overlays with the concepts being taught. And um, Brielle really has uh, used these overlays. At first, you guys, I'm not gonna lie, I was being cheap and I was like, you know what? I don't need these overlays. She'll do just fine. But um, we did find having these overlays be very beneficial in teaching Brielle fractions. Now for the Zeta, when she gets to this level, she's going to be using this um, algebra and decimal insert kit and um, I'm not too sure exactly how this one uh, works just yet because we're not on this level but um, this is how the kit looks on the inside so um, I'm excited to kind of see how they teach the decimals and percentages with uh, these uh, overlays and things like that in here so um, yeah we will see when Brielle gets to this level and um, hopefully I will be able to like make you guys like an, a review as she gets to Zeta and show you guys like how they actually use the uh, algebra and the decimal kits um, so yeah so this these are the components to the Epsilon and the Zeta. So you guys, I'm gonna give you a closer look into Epsilon and then I guess I'll give you a quick flip through of Zeta since I already have it here so you guys can see it. Okay, you guys, so the main difference between Saxon and Matthew C is the biggest difference. It's that Saxon is your spiral-based program where you're gonna be covering each of these concepts that are actually in both Epsilon and Zeta at the level of Saxon 7.6. I really feel like Saxon 7.6 is a combination of Epsilon and Zeta uh, if you kind of like put those programs together but Saxon is in a spiral program or a spiral approach hopefully I'm making sense <laughs> but um, yeah so the main thing the main difference is that we're going from a full-on spiral to a full-on mastery however uh, some misconceptions about uh, math you see is that uh, it doesn't have any review and as you see when I open up this uh, student work text you will see that uh, math you see does bring back some of the older concepts in this level that was in the gamma and the delta level uh, for a little bit of review in the systematic review portion. Um, they are not covering those concepts again, how a traditional spiral brace program will cover those uh, concepts again. They just have it in there for additional review. However, the main focus in this level is uh, fractions. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. Um, so this right here is the student workbook and we're gonna kind of get like a closer look and some of the pages in here, uh, Brielle actually did. So um, this right here is a pretty good overview of how uh, Epsilon looks. So these are all the concepts that are gonna be taught in Epsilon. Uh, there are a total of 30 lessons. However, each of the lessons can take you anywhere between a week for your kiddo to master. Like as you guys can see, uh, Brielle only did three um, worksheets before she was prepared for the test to master it. Whereas this week right here, when she uh, learned about the rule of six infraction, 
experience, she spent the whole week plus to test mastering that concept. So um, this is kind of like your checklist for um, the lesson practice and the systematic review before you get to your test in um, Epsilon. So hopefully that makes sense that uh, this program since it is mastery is not meant for your kiddo to do every single lesson practice and every single systematic review practice um, they are doing this until they have mastered the concept and they can pass the test um, at least that is my understanding of how the program is working and how it has worked for Brielle so far so as you guys can see I kind of dropped the ball in filling out <laughs> this portion uh, for where we actually are at in the Epsilon program so uh, in the beginning, uh, this is how the student work text looks. So uh, your kiddo will start off by watching their uh, video at the beginning of each lesson from Mr. Demi on how the concept is taught and uh, they do their lesson practice. Now for Brielle, we've been doing about two lesson practices a day. So uh, for the first day when she did it, she did lesson practice 1A and 1B. And then I realized, okay, Brielle got this concept in uh, teaching the um, the portion of the fractions, how she was learning two thirds of, and then she had some fraction word problems. So I was like, okay, I think she's ready to go ahead and uh, do a systematic review. So uh, we skipped lesson six and we went straight into her systematic review of this lesson. And this is again, how the systematic review looks where they're gonna be reviewing the, new, the concept that they just taught them. However, they're still gonna give them some practice of older concepts that they went over. So in this case, they gave her a quick review on a perimeter uh, right here. And then um, here goes the next systematic review, which is 1E. And uh, we didn't do this because at this point, Brielle was ready for the test. Um, this portion right here, which is the 1G, it always has some type of application and enrichment um, lesson and this one is really fun the first lesson i actually skipped but moving forward i make sure that brielle actually does this application in enrichment because it's really fun uh hints to solving word problems it has some type of puzzle some type of uh, added uh review in this portion and she's been really enjoying this page so on the days that she does her tests for um the lesson i have her do her application in enrichment that same day so um, one thing I definitely can say about Matthew C, you guys, as you can see, compared to Saxon, the pages are very clean and it's not cluttered at all. So if you have a kiddo that um, they kind of get overwhelmed by seeing a lot of problems on the page, uh, they definitely won't have that feeling with uh, Math UC because everything is laid out so simply. Um, I'm actually working through this program, the Math UC uh, Primer, with my four-year-old right now, and I can definitely say it has the same type of format where the pages are uh, nice and clean, and um, I definitely love that. So as you guys can see, for uh, Lesson 2 and three, Brielle kind of just went straight to the test. And uh, we actually didn't do these lessons. She watched the video and she was confident uh, because we were coming from Saxon and this was a spiral or Saxon is spiral. So she did cover these concepts. Um, we just, I had her watch the video so she can see how Mr. Demi taught it. And then she went straight to the test. So each lesson, again, we have your 3A, 3B, and 3C for your lesson practice. And then after 3C, you have your systematic review, which then has your quick review of older concepts from previous levels. And you have three pages of your systematic review and then you have your application and enrichment. And that is pretty much how uh, the program goes. So after each lesson, you do your um, test right here in the uh, Epsilon book. And again, the tests are so simple and clean. Each test only has 20 problems. And um, I just love the format and the flow of this. Your kiddo is just working and honing in on one concept at a time. However, it still reviews the older concepts that they went over in previous lessons. So um, they're never gonna kind of like forget what they already went over because it's always gonna have that review of what they went over over previously in the fractions. 
So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to like flip through here. Uh, one misconception I definitely will say, like I said before, is that uh, Matthew C does have some portions of review because as you guys can see uh, in the systematic review, they are reviewing over uh, multiplication right here. And towards the latter end of Epsilon, the level, they will be uh, reviewing over other things like uh, measurements and fractions. Um, they're going to be going over circumference in this level as well. Where is it? Um, let's see. It's towards the ladder, and they're going to go over um, circumference, and they're going to go over um, other concepts other than fractions. Oh, here goes the measurements right here. Uh, they have a pretty good bit of word problems. I was really surprised because when I first heard about Matthew C, I heard that they didn't have many word problems, but they do have a, a good bit of word problems, especially in a systematic review. And um, I make sure Brielle does all of the word problems because I really think they're beneficial. Um, right here, they are graphing points in the coordinate. Um, so um, while the focus, again, like I said, is on fractions in this level, they will be covering over other uh, concepts as well from taught from previous uh, lessons. So here's the latter end of um, Epsilon. And as you guys can see, uh, they start over going over basic algebra towards the end of this, really preparing the kiddos for what's to come in uh, Zeta. So um, I love, again, like I said, how clean the pages are. The kiddos is honing in on one concept at a time, and they really are uh, mastering it. And uh, so far, so good. Um, like I said, I'm still pretty new to this program, but that is pretty much how a lesson will work in Epsilon and how a week would work. Again, the weeks vary based on your kid's skill level and if they master that concept faster or not. Now, if your kiddo does um, need more practice on the um, the digital toolbox, which is completely free for you, you're able to access uh, worksheets where you can generate more worksheets on a concept uh, if they go through all of the worksheets in the um, actual student work text, which is really cool. So they have ample amounts of opportunity to master that skill before uh, moving on. So I'm gonna give you guys a brief flip through of Zeta and how it looks on the inside as well. Okay, you guys, so this is Zeta. Here is our instruction manual, student workbook, and our test right here. And I'm just gonna give you guys a brief flip through. Again, it's exactly the same, where we have our lesson practice, systematic review, and all the concepts taught. It is, uh, again, 30 lessons and the kiddos, they take their time mastering each one of the lessons. Uh, this level uh, goes over only decimals and percentages. However, as you guys are gonna see, as I flip through the pages, they will be reviewing some of the concepts taught that was taught in um, Epsilon, which is kind of cool. So right here, this was like one of the first concepts that was taught in Epsilon that they have as a quick review. So again, the focus is not going to be on um, fractions or multiplication or division, but they will bring in that review from the previous levels because uh, since this is a full on mastery, after your kiddo has finished each level of uh, Matthew C, they will have mastered uh, all in that particular uh, subject that they uh, needed to learn. Now for me, since I was coming from a spiral based program to a mastery based program, one thing that I noticed that Brielle was missing in her overall um, mastery was a larger um, multiplication and division practice. I noticed uh, she didn't go as far as uh, as far as Matthew C went. So what I did was I just had Brielle practice um, these type of multiplication problems. Oh, sorry, this is uh, decimals, but I had her practice um, four by three and long division um, as she was working through the beginning parts of Epsilon for the first six weeks until she mastered that skill. So when it presented itself in Epsilon, she was uh, all ready to go. So that was a way that I was able to kind of like fill in those gaps for Brielle in coming from a spiral to a mastery based program. Um, and I didn't want to teach her how to do division and uh, multiplication the way that Matthew C taught it because she already learned it and I didn't want to confuse her. I just wanted to make sure she knew how to do uh, long division, long multiplication, and she mastered that skill along with learning um, fractions from Epsilon. Again, because I was coming from a spiral program, it's kind of it kind of was hard for me to place her, but when I figured out uh, where she needed to be at, um, it definitely has been a seamless 
this uh, transition for her. And as you guys can see right here, here goes some more review of the fractions in the Zeta level. So again, same format, one concept at a time, nice and clean pages, and the kiddos can really hone in on that one concept. Um, I know a lot of people's concerns with coming from a spiral program to a mastery program is like, if you do decide to push your kiddos back into public school or if something was to happen, that your kiddos will only have mastered like one concept. One thing I will say is that once you get to these levels, especially like once you get to Zeta and pre-algebra and on, I feel like uh, what they're covering in each of the levels is pretty spot on. So I was okay with making this transition for Brielle at this level uh, because I know once she gets or once she completes per decimals and percentages, she's pretty much gonna be on par with her other, um, I guess, uh, students that are in like public school um, as far as learning the concepts, if anything was to happen and we were to uh, move away from homeschool and go towards like public school, she would, her uh, mathematics skills would align with what the public school is teaching once they go into like um, the pre-algebra geometry calculus level. Uh, it's still mastery in its approach, but it's not as mastery as like the beginning levels where they're just doing math or where they're just doing uh, addition, multiplication, division for the whole year. Um, these upper levels kind of like a line up when um, you are comparing it to other programs. Um, so yeah, you guys, this actually is a uh, Matthew C. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you guys enjoy just like this in-depth view, like really seeing inside of Saxon and Matthew C. I know a lot of you guys like myself, you're not close to like a homeschool store where you can kind of really put your hands on these curriculums and like see them firsthand. So I know how helpful these videos can be. I mean, trust me, they're very very helpful for me as well. So I really hope this video answered all of you guys' questions about Saxon and Matthew C. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer all of you guys' questions, especially as we are like in search for like our next year's curriculum and things like that. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.